Thank you. Yes, hello and welcome everybody to our webinar about collagenase troubleshooting or how to optimize your cell isolation with collagenase NB. My name is Julia Zapperster and I'm here together with my colleagues Lilia Polle and Jens Böttcher from the Collagenase product management team. So in the next few minutes, we will first start with the general introduction, of course, and then move on how to find the right collagenase and how to prepare and use this collagenase in your application, including choosing the right buffer and pH, dissolving the collagenase, and preparing stock and working solutions, inhibition of your digestion, and, of course, many more. Here we go. So, why is collagenase used to isolate cells? First of all, collagen is the most common protein in mammals, important part of the extracellular matrix. The peptide bonds in collagen, however, can be broken by collagenases. Almost all collagenase for tissue dissociation originate from the bacterium Clostridium histolyticum. Clostridium histolyticum is a pathogen which secretes two classes of collagenases as well as the enzymes neutroprotease, clostriparine, and as a virulence factor to digest the extracellular matrix and to spread in the host's body. Therefore, the natural mixture of these four enzymes is, so to say, optimized by nature to dissociate tissue. And please note that the different collagenase classes namely class 1 and class 2, are not to be confused with type 1 and type 2 collagenases, which are used as a brand name by some suppliers. In general, knowing about collagenases is so important because it is the crucial step in cell isolation with influ which influences your yield, viability and the function of your cells. So, we offer, of course, a wide range of collagenases with different levels of purity and quality because different applications and different tissues require different collagenase qualities. Our collagenases with a balanced ratio of proteolytic site activities possess the natural mixture of collagenase, neutral protease and clostriparine as occurring in the bacteria leading to a high cell yield. In addition, they are characterized by a low to medium collagenase activity. In contrast, our purified collagenase, collagenase MB8 broad range, is characterized by a higher collagenase activity but reduced other proteolytic site activities. And our highly purified collagenases are for very sensitive cells and characterized by a very high collagenase activity but they are also largely free of other proteolytic site activities, but these are essential for efficient cell isolation. So one way to add this site activity is by using our purified neutral protease to the cell isolation. So which collagenase you choose depends strongly on your cell type and application. We offer an application overview as a technical note for the most common applications with recommendations for collagenase NB type, the concentration and the digestion conditions. It is a very useful tool for identifying the best collagenase NB product and is available in print and PDF. But in addition, we offer protocols and starting conditions for many, many more applications. So just contact us and we are happy to help you out with your application. So our research grade collagenases are intended for fundamental and preclinical research and for protocol establishing as they are the most cost effective. But we highly recommend switching to GMP grade collagenases produced according to good manufacturing practice, GMP, by the German pharmaceutical company Nordmark for applications where the cells are used for clinical purposes like transplantation. And since the enzymatic activities of many of our research collagenases are comparable to the GMP grade ones, switching between these collagenases is easy if you dose according to activity. 
So after you have chosen the white collagenase, it is time to start talking about how to handle and use the enzymes. All points mentioned in the section can also be found on the product insert, which comes together with every vial of enzyme. The collagenase is stable at least until the date on the COA, when unopened and stored correctly. If the vial is opened and closed several times, the lyophilisated enzyme comes in contact with air moisture, which might decrease its activity, since the enzyme powder is hygroscopic. Therefore, the vial should not be opened and closed repeatedly. If the enzyme is once diluted, repeated freezing and thawing should also be avoided, since this also leads to a decreased activity. To avoid repeated freezing and thawing, it is highly recommended to prepare single-use aliquots of your collagenase solution and store those instead of the whole solution if you cannot use it at once. And this way, stable at minus 20 degrees for at least one year. So what do you have to know when choosing your buffer, pH and temperature? Most buffers are suitable for reconstitution of the collagenase, for example, HBSS, PBS, TRIS or Ringer solution. Collagenase depends on calcium, therefore you might use a buffer with more than 2 millimolar or equal to um, 2 millimolar calcium ions to be on the safe side, even though it is not strongly necessary since our collagenases already have bound calcium ions to the enzyme. And to use the collagenase most efficiently, it is good to know that collagenase activity is at an optimum at 37 degrees, pH 7.4. As mentioned before, the enzyme comes in a lyophilisated powder, since it is the most stable in this form. To use the enzyme, it has to be dissolved in liquid, which can be common culture buffers or even water, as discussed on the slide before. Since the enzymes are temperature sensitive, you should put the vial on ice while adding the liquid and dissolving the powder. The powder can adhere to the inner surface of the vial and the plug. Therefore, it is recommended to add the liquid by puncturing the rubber septum of the plug with the syringe. To keep the rubber plug in the vial, you can open only the top part of the lid, as you can see here. And after adding the liquid, gently swirl and invert, invert the vial several times to mix the powder with the liquid. The powder should be completely dissolved to achieve the desired concentration. And depending on the product or your application, it might be beneficial to sterile filter the enzyme after you have dissolved it. For this, you have to use filters which do not bind proteins well to avoid filtering out the collagenase. This can be for materials such as cellulose, PVDF or PES. And if you use sterile enzymes such as collagenase NB6 GMP grade or collagenase NB5 sterile grade, or pre-filtered enzymes such as collagenase NB1 premium grade, it is not necessary to filter the collagenase solution again if you have used sterile equipment for dissolution in the first place. So, as you might know, when dissolving the collagenase powder, you have to keep the concentration in mind you want to work with. Since it is recommended to dissolve the powder directly in the vial, you should not directly be able or you will not directly be able to achieve the concentration you want to add to your cells at first. Therefore, a stock solution has to be prepared when dissolving the collagenase powder. A stock solution is a concentrated solution you later dilute to some lower concentrated for actual use with your cell. This way, you can dissolve the collagenase directly in the vial to avoid product loss. And when preparing the stock solution, you have to keep two things in mind. One is, of course, the maximum vial size, which determines the maximum amount of liquid you can add. And another is the maximum solubility, which is the maximum amount of product which still dissolves in water and which determines the minimum amount of liquid you have to add. So let's have a look at this table to see what this exactly means. 
the maximum solubility of collagenase M before is 150 milligram per ml. This means that if your vial holds one gram of collagenase powder, you will have to dilute this one gram in 6.7 ml to achieve this concentration. You can, of course, add up to 10 ml to achieve a lower concentration. This is the same for the other examples. But careful, when your vial is packed according to activity and not to mass, as for instance with collagenase and we want premium grade, you have to calculate the amount of milligram per vial and the volume of liquid you have to add for each lot using the corresponding COA. And an important reminder, if you do not use your stock solution right away, you should store the, the solution in single-use aliquots to avoid repeated freezing and thawing. So now after you have mastered the stock solution, you might want to prepare the solution you actually can use with your cells. This is called the working solution, which contains this concentration of collagenase you need for your protocol and is, surprisingly, called the working concentration. Even though it is the concentration you work with in your protocol, this is not necessarily the concentration of enzyme your cells finally come into contact with, which is therefore called the final concentration. To illustrate this, you can think of adding the working solution to just the naked cells, as you will maybe do with adherent cells in a dish without buffer or media. This way, the cells are directly surrounded by the working solution containing the working concentration of collagenase. Hence, you could say that the working concentration and the final concentration are the same. However, if you add the working solution to cells in a liquid, as for instance with adipocytes in liposuction tissue, your working solution will be mixed with the already present liquid and therefore your working concentration will be diluted to a lower one, which is then the final concentration your cells come into contact with. So if you need help determining the final concentration for your cell isolation, the Zerva Collagenase and B-Team offers protocols and starting conditions for many applications, as already noted before. So here are a few examples, but of course we have many more available. Just write us a message. So let's apply what you have learned so far. In the case of cardiomyocytes, for instance, we, make a, we recommend using collagenase NB8 broad range for research applications. Since this is in your protocol, the collagenase solution containing um, 0.5 PZ units per ml is directly added to the cardiomyocytes. The working concentration is, in this example, the same as the final concentration. However, in the case of adipocytes, the working concentration of collagenase is added to not only the cells, but to the adipose tissue, which is a loose connective tissue looking nearly like a gelatinous liquid. In this case, the protocol tells you to mix the liquid tissue with the collagenase solution using one, one volume of tissue and one volume of collagenase solution. As you can see, the working concentration is therefore divided in half, being then the final concentration in your test tube. So we highly recommend to dose all our collagenases and neutroproteases by activity. Some people are used to dose and calculate the enzymes in a volume percentage. But by using the enzymes by activity, you will get consistent cell isolation results with different collagenase lots. And you can easily switch from research to GMP grade from server and also switch from collagenases from other suppliers since you always apply the same activity to the cells. And although we have a high lot-to-lot con lot lot consistency, activities of each lot may vary as collagenases are biological products. So now we have talked about, a lot about using the right activity. 
And you can see here an example of a COA for collagenase NB4 standard grade, a research grade enzyme, and collagenase NB6 GMP grade, a GMP grade enzyme. And the PZ activity is marked in red on both COAs. And this is the value you need to calculate your enzyme solutions and to use the enzymes by units. So maybe you have already noticed that different manufacturers use different unit definitions for their collagenases. There are three commonly used collagenase activity units. The first is BZ according to Winch, which is used by Zerva, but also as well by Roche. The second is CDU according to Mandel and is used by Sigma Worthington Life Technologies. And the third one is the FALGPA, used by Sigma as well. And to switch to Zerva's collagenase, you can calculate the needed units by using the indicated values. To switch from CDU to PZ, the conversion is approximately and very roughly 1000 to 1, and from FALGPA to PZ, approximately 3.9 to 1. But these are only rough estimations, so we highly recommend using the optimal collagenase and concentration based on, your, on our application note or um, on an app publication, because sometimes it can be difficult to compare the collagenases directly one-on-one. -on -one. So now you heard how to use the collagenase but there are some factors that inhibit the collagenase and in this way may affect the outcome of your isolation. But they are also a perfect tool when applied on purpose to stop or inhibit your digestion. The first and often used factor is washing out the collagenase by dilution. Since this only decreases the collagenase concentration to very low, nearly not detectable levels, it is often used in combination with the next method, which is cooling down the enzyme. As for every enzyme, the activity of collagenase is temperature dependent. Here you can see the temperature dependence of collagenase NB1 in blue and collagenase NB4 in red. The PZ activity is stated in percentage of activity at 25 degrees as the Winch assay is performed at this temperature. The highest activity is at 37 degrees to 40 degrees, whereas the temperature optimum is 37 degrees. Higher temperatures than 40 degrees are not recommended since these can degrade, degrade the enzymes. If you cool down your digestion solution, the activity is reduced dramatically until there is almost no activity detectable. The combination of dilution and cooling down most commonly is used to stop the digestion. Here you can see the dependence of collagenase activity on pH. pH 7.1 is marked in red which is the pH where the BZ assay is performed. The pH optimum is 7.4. Collagenase is reversibly inactivated at high pH values and irreversibly inactivated at low pH values. And collagenase activity is also strongly dependent on depending on calcium. When calcium ions are removed by chelating agents like EDTA, there will be no activity at all as you can see here. So if you add EDTA, your collagenase activity will be zero. If the protocol requires the use of EDTA or another chelating agent, it should be ensured that all of it is removed before adding the collagenase. However, it has to be noted that, a, that an, ad, an additional supplementation of calcium to the isolation solution is not necessary as indicated by the blue line here. Even though most customers add some calcium as a standard procedure just to be on the safe side. In addition to the previous men mentioned EDTA, there are some other substances that inhibit the collagenase as well. The most common ones are listed such as cysteine, DTT and others. 
So with this last slide, I would like to thank you for at your attention and we will be happy to answer any questions uh, which may have arisen. And you can also write us an email um, to collegenace at server.de. Thank you.